Hi, it's Aviera with Action Esports, and welcome back to another Artifact video. Today's video will be a bit different than the ones before. We're going to talk about 7 things that are unique about Artifact compared to other card games, and mistakes we hope Artifact doesn't make. Number 1. Artifact has 3 different lanes, which is like playing 3 different Hearthstone or Shadowverse games at the same time. Other card games like Faria, Duelist, Hand of Gods, and Endless Scroll Legends have complicated board states that require a lot of interactions. This plus a few other reasons is why these games have not had as much of a success as the Hearthstone or Shadowverse. Don't get me wrong, a lot of beta testers and new players who tried out the game for the first time said that it doesn't take long to get used to playing in 3 different lanes, and it is very intuitive. Also, combat is automatic so you don't have to drag each unit to attack your enemy like in other card games. Unfortunately, this may push non-competitive players away from the game. The problem is not about if players are able to play Artifact, but if they are willing to put their entire focus on every single Artifact game they play. I play Hearthstone and Shadowverse pretty much every day, and let me tell you, I don't always pay attention even if I'm playing high ranked games. Sometimes I even watch Netflix or YouTube on the side. I just hope that Artifact allows all types of players to enjoy the game for hours on end, just as Hearthstone has done for me, and may have for some of you watching this video. Number 2. Artifact has 4 different colors in the game, which is comparable to classes in other card games. In Artifact, you can mix and match whatever colors you like. You could even add all 4 colors to your decks if you're feeling adventurous. There are no neutral cards in Artifact other than items, which cannot be added to your regular deck anyways. This lets you have access to all sorts of cards when building a deck. This kind of flexibility isn't available in other games. If in Hearthstone I had access to Defile in classes other than Warlock, life would be so much easier for me. Then again, the gameplay aspect would change significantly because I would have to play around every class being able to play Defile. Some games such as Hearthstone and Shadowverse focus on having unique class identities. On the other hand, Magic and Artifact have themes for each of their colors but also give you the option of color mixing. Each have their merits and I can't say one is better than the other. If you have never played Magic before, color mixing in Artifact will allow you to explore a new dimension of card games. If you do come from a Magic background, Artifact will be an easy transition for you. If you filter Artifact cards by color, you will see that they are inspired by the famous Magic color wheel. What else did you expect from a game that Richard Garfield helped design? Number 3. Leading off of the last point, the 4 colors and no neutral cards may upset some players because there will be situations when you can't play a card in a lane, even if you have the mana to do so. Magic or Faria players won't be faced by this, since they have been playing lands to play cards anyway, but Hearthstone or Shadowverse players may find it a bit annoying. Artifact made it so that heroes can be redeployed after 2 rounds or in the very next round if they have rapid deployment. In Magic, ensuring you have the appropriate amount and color of mana to cast your spells is essential. You may have to slowly rebuild your land base if it is destroyed, or instead rely on non-mana abilities. It is very easy to get completely locked out of a game of Magic as a result of your opponent disrupting your mana base, or simply due to not being able to generate the mana you need because of unlucky hands. In my opinion, the extra element of constantly being wary of being locked out of a game makes competition more skill intensive. I guess Artifact is better than Hearthstone and Shadowverse in that regard, but at the same time, it is significantly less punishing than Magic. Hopefully the devs don't decide to eliminate this element of gameplay. Speaking of nerfs, let's move on to the next point. Number 4. People who play Hearthstone would know that recently they nerfed 2 standard cards. Just 2, really? Many were not happy with this change, I know I wasn't and they thought it wasn't enough because even though the meta is very diverse right now, it is not very enjoyable. We have been playing the same decks for quite a few months now, and whenever you queue a game on ladder, you have no idea what your opponent is playing. Even after the nerfs, let's say you queue Odd Rogue against a warrior, you know you probably lost the game before the game even started. There are many other matchups that face similar situations. I personally think that whenever you queue a game in any card game, you should have a reasonable chance of winning, most of the time, if not all. You should not be forced to quit as soon as the game starts, just as the Odd Warriors concede to quest strokes on turn 1. I'm not saying they should always nerf cards, but some kind of change to shake up the meta would be appreciated. I believe Shadowverse does this well, and Artifact should do something similar to their approach. 
Although, that kind of situation will only happen few weeks or months after the release of the game. Shadowverse makes balance patches pretty much every month or two. Sometimes they nerf cards, sometimes they buff them, and sometimes they even introduce many expansions with very few powerful cards to shake up the metagame. They recently announced changes to cards that would be implemented a month after the expansion release. Number 5. A lot of people aren't excited about having to pay $20 for the base game. A lot of card games are free to play, which means you get to try out a game for free and you technically could invest a lot of time, or grind as players like to call it, to obtain more and more cards. Artifact does not allow this, you cannot even grind gold like you do in Hearthstone, Shadowverse, etc. to buy booster packs. If you want a card that you don't have, you're forced to buy it from the Steam marketplace. To competitive players, this may not be such a big deal. As a card game enthusiast, I know I'm going to sink quite a bit of money to play the game, but I can also relate with people who can't spend money on card games. When I started playing Hearthstone, I had to ask my parents to buy me packs, and they were not very happy with that idea. I know a lot of high school students face a similar problem. Hopefully it does not become too expensive for artifact players to keep up with the game. This brings us to the next point. Number 6. In trading card games such as Magic, the metagame drives the prices of cards in competitive decks. If a pro player manages to successfully modify an established deck with the fringe card or pilots an unknown deck archetype to great success in a tournament, many people will suddenly want to use that card or play that deck. As you might expect, this results in a rapid price spikes of key cards. Hearthstone, on the other hand, doesn't have a trading feature, therefore the cost of a deck remains relatively the same, but you may be forced to craft a card that you did not have before. When Quest Rogue rose in popularity, I had to craft Stargazer Luna to counter it with Tempo Mage. However, I still only had to pay 1600 dust to craft that card, and not more. Artifact is a digital trading card game, so the prices will differ from physical TCGs. Artifact hasn't spoken about this yet, but since the game isn't physical, there are no real limitations to availability of specific cards. A lot of people might have the same cards that they can sell online, and the supply will go up significantly. Even if a deck becomes super popular, the cards in that deck may not cost more than they did previously. This hybrid between a digital and a trading card game might just put Artifact at the top if it chooses not to limit the availability of cards in the Steam market. Number 7. Hearthstone Arena is accessible by paying $150 in-game currency, or by paying $1.50 that no one really does. Artifact has no concept of in-game currency, therefore we are not entirely sure if we need actual money to enter the draft mode, or if it is just free. Each version has its own set of problems. If the draft mode is free, there would be no reward system like in Hearthstone. After all, that would mean that we could basically get all the cards available by just grinding drafts, and there would be no consequence for people who quit their draft early. So to compensate for that, we probably want a good separate tier or leaderboard system so that the players can feel a sense of accomplishment playing draft for free with no rewards. There also needs to be some sort of punishment system for people who choose to end their draft early. On the other hand, if the draft is paid, then a simple draft mode with basic rewards may not be good enough for players to play it regularly. In this case, Artifact could adopt the MTG Arena style of drafting, where you pay a certain amount to play the draft mode, and in the end you keep the cards that you have drafted, and get rewarded for the number of wins you get. However, it may lead to players making weird drafts to get the cards they want for their collection. Lastly, I hope Artifact comes up with a multiplayer mode, like 2v2 or something. I always wanted to play co-op card games and watching friends play Hearthstone with the help of spectator mode. That's it for today folks. I know this video was a bit longer than usual, but I hope you found it interesting. Let us know in the comments below what kind of things you want Artifact to incorporate and what mistakes you wanted to avoid. Thanks for watching guys and see you next time.